Hello, I am Erica Brody and welcome to Woman Rejoice. Woman, you about to rejoice because God is going to do something amazing in your life. I truly believe that with um, what God is going to speak to you through this series, that there's going to be some transformation taking place in your life. So get ready, buckle your seat, and here we go. Before we get started, I want you to grab a notebook and a pen. If you are a note taker, if you are doing the dishes or taking care of your kids, don't even worry about it, but make sure whatever you are doing at some point, you spend time with Jesus today. So I love you. And uh, we're going to open up by reading John chapter 11. So turn with me there. I'm reading from the New King James Version. And I'm going to read you a little excerpt. Now, I, I, it might be lengthy, okay? But trust me, we're going somewhere with this. And you might have heard this story before, but God has a fresh word for you. So here we go. It says, Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, and the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair. You remember her? We talked about her in another story. I'm going to get back to the story, though. So it says, that um, therefore the sister sent to him and said, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. And when Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death before the glory of God, that the son of God might be glorified through it. So I'm going to stop there and I'm going to give you the first point. Point number one, woman, that's just the title, but it's um, woman rejoice regardless of the issue. So I want you to write down rejoice regardless of the issue. The amazing thing that we see in this story unfolding is that Mary and Martha are presenting a very serious issue to the Lord. And I feel like I need to encourage some of you who are going through something extremely difficult in this season. God sees it. And we might say, well, you know, I don't know. It doesn't seem like it. And we might uh, feel like, you know, we have to remind God and saying, well, don't forget, it's the one you love, whether it's us and we go, God, don't forget you love me. Or we're saying, God, don't forget about that situation. And, and, you know, and people in our lives that we're concerned about or whatever the issue may be. And we put a little clause to it and going, it's right here. <laughs> Just so you know, it hasn't moved. God sees it. And what I want to tell you is this, is that you can rejoice, even though the issue has not yet been resolved. Why? Because Jesus responded and he said, the sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the son of God may be glorified through it. So you might be thinking some situations are very dire right now. You might be thinking, you know, I don't know. I mean, life is crazy right now. If we look at what's going on in the world, you're like, girl, I'm saying that about the gas prices right now. I'm saying that about, you know, everything. Well, great. But I want you to know that there is a reason that God wants to pull out this rejoice inside of you. In Philippians, it says this. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. That, that came from Paul, who wrote that letter to the Philippians when he was in prison. Now, some of you might not be in that place where you're actually in prison, but I'm going to tell you something. If that man could write and share that, uh, given an encouraging letter to the body of Christ and saying he had a reason to rejoice, there's something we need to press into there. There's something where he had a revelation of who God was, no matter what he was experiencing. And I believe that you and I, no matter what we're facing, we can experience the same thing. And so I want to keep going here. And give Jesus' response in verse chapter 5. Well, it says, Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. And then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. I'm going to stay on point number one here. Stay with me. And then we're going to step on to point two. But God will stretch you for longer than you think. And so... When we rejoice, regardless of the issue, we have to understand that the issue might not be resolved as quick as we think. And you can say, well, how, how can I rejoice in that? Because sometimes when we go through things, we forget that God loves us. But it said that Jesus loved all three of them very much. And you're like, wait a second. You're telling me God 
or Jesus loved all three of them, but yet he was allowing that to happen. But what did he just say before? That he was going to be glorified and that this thing was not unto death. And so I want to continue on here and I want to get to point number two. And it says this, rejoice and go where he is sending you. So right after that, he says to the disciples, after they waited for two days and took their time, he said, let us go to Judea again. And the disciples responded and said to him, Rabbi, lately the Jews, they sought to stone you. And you're going to go there again? And Jesus said, are there not 12 hours in a day? If anyone walks in the day, he doesn't stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. So what, what is Jesus saying there? One minute he's saying, all right, I love him and I'm going to stay here. I'm, I'm doing something. But then he says this, all right, it's time to go back. And the disciples go, wait, 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 wait. That's the place of persecution. That's the place where it's going to be difficult. Wait, aren't there people who like hate you and, and want to kill you? There's a, there's a lot of like dying and potential dying in this chapter. What is going on? And what I want to encourage you with this is point number two. Rejoice and go where he is sending you. Many times we go, God, oh, I just can't wait for my new assignment. I can't wait for the next place that you want to send me to until it's Judea. Until it's the place of great persecution. Until it's the place where you're like, oh, no, no, no. I'll do anything but, but go there because um, I, I'm going to die. I'm not going to make it. And for some of you who are out on the mission field, that there might be an actual threat of death. And for every, everybody who's just living a day-to-day -day life, you feel like you're going to die on the inside. And the disciples are going, wait, 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 hold up. <laughs> I was fine with you staying, but I'm not fine with you going. And Jesus said, I ain't afraid. What did he say? He's like, there's 12 hours in the daytime. He said, I'm walking in the light. I'm the light of this world. And because I'm the light, he also said in scripture, he said, you are the light of the world, a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. Don't hide your light. And many times we're looking for that next direction. And, and we, we look for this super prophetic word that's going to lead us to uh, this glorious place. But I want to encourage you. There is a glorious place that's ahead of you. And you want to know where it is? It's in the place where you will experience people not liking you. And the sooner we experience people not liking us, the sooner we can get over it so that we can unapologetically be who God has purposed us to be. You guys, life is so short. Time is so short. And when we, we spend time on the merry-go-round and going, hmm, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, the longer we stay in that cycle of not trusting him, the longer we begin to doubt. And so I want to go a little bit further, and I want to encourage you. He's the light of the world. And if you've been born again, the light of Christ lives in you. And if you don't have that, please reach out. Um, I'm going to leave a, a link in the description of where you can reach out. There's different things we'll talk about at the end, but man, there's so much life and so much freedom in Jesus. It's not just quoting scriptures and running around pretending to be happy off of nothing. He truly is and can become our everything. And there's, there's so much freedom in it. It's, it's, it's so amazing. And so he says, these things he said, and after that he said to them, our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him. Then his disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get well. And however, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought he was talking about rest. They thought he was talking about a nap. And so he had to clarify here what was happening. He said, well, Lazarus, is he's, he's actually dead. I'm glad for your sakes I wasn't there that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. And Thomas said, uh, who's called the twin, he said to the fellow disciples, well, uh, let's all go there that we may die with him. <laughs> so... I want to get to my point number three here, and it's this. Rejoice when it gets from bad to worse. Jesus presented a situation, and initially it looked like a nap. And they were like, oh, oof, okay, no big deal. But then he said, well, he's actually dead. And they were like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> he's dead. We're going to a place where we're going to die. Oh, my gosh. And so Thomas is saying his last words to Jesus and, there's all kinds of stuff going on here. And you may find in a situation in your life where you're like, okay, I can handle this. It's a couple bills. Okay, I can handle this. You know, my kids, they're a little louder than normal. That's fine. All right, well, you know, I've been single for a little bit, but you know, it's fine. But when things start to escalate, when temptation starts to hit the fan, and when things start piling up, we begin to go, wait, 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 wait. This, 
whoa, this just got real serious here, Lord. What's going on? And I want to encourage you today that you can rejoice when things go from bad to worse. Why? Because Jesus ain't afraid. He is not worried about the future. He knows what's going to happen in advance. And sometimes we become so afraid because we're focused on what might not even happen. Or we might be so focused on fear that we don't even see that Jesus is trying to do something. He's about to do a miracle. And all they can think about is going, ooh, I don't know. This, this doesn't look good. So be encouraged that there's a reason for you to rejoice and to rejoice when it goes from bad to wor worse because he's at work and he doesn't want us to focus on the present. He wants us to fix our eyes upon him. And that, you know, everybody has a different time when they're going to die and we can focus on, okay, I don't know when I'm going to die. So we get so focused on when we're going to die that we're not actually living. And we're, we're stuck. Some of us are stuck on the computer because we're like, oh my gosh, you know, I, well, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I can do that. And, I, and, and I'm afraid to do that. And what if I do this? And what if I do that? And I want to encourage you, throw out your what ifs and begin to trust the Lord. When things go from bad to worse, when life does not pan out the, the way that you uh, meant it to be. And trust me, what, what the Lord has done in, in my life and what he's taught me, man, I know what it's like to to live in a car. I know what it's like to um, have a history of, of being mistreated and taken advantage of. Even from a, a young age when I was a little girl, I have a, a history of things that we wish never would have happened to kids. It's happened to me. But I'm not going to be defined by what's happened to me. I'm going to be defined by the light of Christ that's inside of me. I'm not going to be defined by all the people that have abandoned me and, and, and said horrible things about me because believe me, they've said them. And they're going to keep saying them. But when Christ resides inside of us and we understand who he is and that he has that resurrection power, nothing can take away this joy. Nothing. And so now I want to get to um, my third point here. I'm going to read a little further here. Stay with me. And it's in uh, verse 17. It says, so when Jesus came and he found that uh, the tomb was already there. He'd been in there for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem and about two miles away. And many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. So I'm going to tell you something. This is just a, this is just a quick little point here is that I'm not going to say that comfort is wrong. There's places where the Holy Spirit is called the comforter, and there's places where we need comfort. But as we see, when Jesus comes into the picture, it says in verse 20, when Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. Now, it is not wrong that, that we want people to be around us, but when that stuff consumes you, and if Jesus is, is wanting to meet with you, go run. Run out and meet the Lord. Run out to meet with the Lord. Make that more important than anything else because without that, I'm sorry. Stuff like this, it, it, it becomes mundane. It becomes lifeless. There's, there's no life in it unless he's in every part of it. And Jesus, he, he wants to meet with us. And um, I want to read this other part right here because it says, but Mary was sitting in the house. How many of us are still sitting in the house instead of running out to Jesus? And we go, no, I, mm -mm, I ain't doing that. He took too long. No, I ain't doing that because I like I like being comfortable. Sometimes we want to be comforted because it, it just feels comfortable. And we like staying in the same place that we are. But I want to encourage you because I know there's different chapters where we say, well, don't be a Martha, be a Mary. But in this part, I'm going to tell you be my, like a, Mary, a Martha. And you better run to Jesus with everything that you have, with your questions, with your concerns, with all that you are. And she said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give it to you. So she's, she's conflicted there, but she's like, well, I, st I still know your word. I still know what your word says. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. So he's meeting her faith. He's meeting when, when she ran out to him. And even though she was conflicted, she's like, well, I don't know. I don't know. But, well... I know whatever you ask of God, God will give it to you. So I have a little bit of faith to ask you. 
And Martha said, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said, I'm the resurrection of life. And he who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? And she said, well, yes, Lord, I believe you're the Christ, the son of God, who's come into the world. So I'm going to stop there. And our last point is this, rejoice and believe. And as he's talking to Martha, he's saying, your brother will rise. And then she goes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, one day it's it's all going to happen. And, you know, yeah, thank you, Lord. Thank you for that encouragement. Yeah, that, it's a difficult time. And I, I understand. <laughs> he's saying, what do you believe? Do you believe? And she's saying, yeah, I, you know, I believe you're you're the Christ. And how many times do we get in these situations where we want to believe him generally, but we don't want to believe that he can actually move in dead situations. I'm speaking to somebody who has a prodigal in their life, whether it's a prodigal son, a prodigal daughter, you got a prodigal friend in your life right now, or maybe you're a prodigal and you're feeling like, oh, well, that's, that's dead and gone. I, I used to read, I used to pray, but you know, my situation's pretty hopeless. I want to encourage you. Jesus wasn't saying, hey, you know, someday it's going to happen. And, and, you know, he said, your brother's going to rise. I don't want to prophesy over you today that, that these things that you have believed that have been dead and gone in your life, they're going to rise in the name of Jesus and by the power of Jesus. And God wants to work in that space where you've been wrestling and you've, you've had the questions, but you've been afraid to run out of the place of where you are in your comfort zone and say, I got my questions, Lord, and I'm ready to, to throw them uh, upon you. And I'm willing to believe that you're still a good God and that you are who you say you are. And so I want to close with this. And I want to and I want to challenge you that as we are going through this series, because believe me, God's not going to have me speak into a place that he hasn't had me go through and he, or he isn't having me go through. And it might not be easy, but I want to challenge you and I want you to ask the Lord, ask the Holy Spirit. Where is there a space where I'm still um, not going to the Lord with everything? I believe he's God. But I'm not giving him this place that's been locked away inside and feels like it's dead and gone and I'm not allowing him to touch it. Where, where is that place? Is there pride? I want you to ask the Holy Spirit, is there pride in my life that's keeping my heart closed off from you? Because that's exactly what that is. Pride is not somebody who's just like, oh, I'm the best person in the world. It's a person who goes, uh, I'm good. I'm good. I, I can do it on my own. You, you don't have to help me. And pride, God opposes. He wants to step into your situation. And I want to challenge um, you, you guys again with something else. I want you to ask the Holy Spirit, is there hypocrisy in my life? Is there a place that I'm pretending I'm full of joy and I'm not and I'm done with pretending? Being a hypocrite was just being an actor. It's somebody who goes, oh yes, darling. Yes, I, it, today is a wonderful day and I'm having a wonderful time and everything's wonderful. And, you know, you can do it with an accent or you can just do it in church, raising your hands and praising God. And there's a lot of junk coming out of your mouth. There's a lot of complaining coming out of your heart. There's a lot of discontentment and going, ugh, if I could be honest with God, I'm bad. I want to challenge you in that season to run out of that house of pride, run out of that house of hypocrisy. We don't have to live this way. We don't have to act this way. And this might this might be offensive because you're like, girl, I I was I was on this broadcast to be encouraged. But if you let that stuff sit in there for long enough, you're going to be discouraged and you're going to live hopeless and you're going to live selfish and you're going to live inward and you're not going to be allowed to see what God is doing in the future. So I want to close and I want to pray for you. God, I just thank you right now for every person that's watching this broadcast. I thank you that you're going to teach them a reason to rejoice. I thank you for those that don't know you that are going to come to truly know you and be fully born again. I thank you, God, that deliverance is going to take place, Lord, in this broadcast. I thank you, Father, that people are going to get physically healed and set free, Lord, from sickness and bitterness and pain and loss and not understanding where you've been in this season, God. 
And I prophesy over you today that just like Mary and Martha in their situation, and, and then she says later on in the chapter, I'm not going to get in that, into that until next week, but she said, Lord, if you would have, if you would have been here, this, this wouldn't have happened to me. But Jesus was about to get glorified through the situation. I prophesy to you today that you've been sulking in this place, but God is saying, move out of this place of sulking and begin to believe me for what I'm going to do. Don't look to where I was or where I wasn't. I waited because I wanted to stretch you. I waited because I wanted to show you greater things. I waited so that you wouldn't get the glory yourself. I waited so that in that humble place that you could see and rely on me again because you've been relying on yourself. And I prophesy a new beginning to you in the name of Jesus. And I thank God that his mercies are new to you and I every morning. There's a brand new start for you. And you don't have to feel shame and you don't have to feel condemnation. You just give that thing to him and you watch what he'll do with it. I thank you everyone for watching. I'm going to leave our info below this broadcast. Um, if, if this blessed you and you want more, uh, my husband and I, we, we do videos and we've got adventures and cooking and all kinds of stuff we're going to be releasing. And we love you guys. We love Jesus and we love you. And um, I hope that you'll stay tuned for more. If you are interested in more of this and you like what you saw, you know what to do. And um, yeah, until next time, I love you. Stay tuned for part two of Woman Rejoice. I'm going to see... Some of you guys are going to send me uh, pictures of you praise dancing after this. I firmly believe that um, he's mighty to save. So God bless you.